Anthony and I came to Johannesburg and we've been traveling around Africa on this wild toilet tour mm. and we felt that this tour couldn't possibly be complete without having a chance to sit down with you and the reason for this is because before before I started Soil, back in 2005, so seven years ago now, mm. you and I met at an EcoSan conference. Yes. And uh, I was immediately charmed by you, and we ended oh. up spending weeks sort of traveling around, and we came right here to this house in Johannesburg mm. with mm. Richard Holden. And I think that it was during that, that week and a half, two weeks that I spent with you that my love for ecological sanitation was born. Mm. And I think that the reason that you and I, one of the reasons that we connected so well, was because of our shared love for soil. And I think that what I loved about you and what I, what I felt more strongly with you than with many of the other participants in the conference was that you you love your work because of a true appreciation that you have for nature and natural biological processes. And I'm also, I'm an ecologist, you are a marine biologist, and mm. here we found ourselves in the field of sanitation. So yes. I think we just, we wanted to take this opportunity to chat a little bit with you about some of your ideas and also mm. about how it is that you got into this field of sanitation and what it is that that draws you to the idea of transforming human waste into something else? Mm. Well, it's an interesting question, a big question. Anyhow, it's a pleasure to see you both here in Johannesburg. I am actually live and work in, uh, in uh, Zimbabwe, and I'm very happy to be working there. Um, what drew us into this area? Well, I guess that my life in this curious world of sanitation began long ago and the introduction to Ecosan was more recent but in only in relative terms I think that must be I don't know whether it's one decade or one and a half decades ago you know this concept of using sanitation in a, in a slightly different way to convert things into useful materials. I don't know, that, for me that was a fair distance along my own career in this area. Um, but as you rightly said, you know, it's to do with your biological background, your interest in biology and nature. The fact is that we often say that the answer lies in the soil and the soil is the great converter. I mean, what would we do on this planet without soil, which as I presume is decomposed rock, is it, in some way? I'm not sure. And well, decompose and, and, and humans to, and Together animals. with the biological component, of course, mm -hmm. to make it soil, and water. So th these are vital elements in the process. And uh, of course, recycling is an ancient thing that has been used I guess in many parts of the world, particularly the Far East, for centuries. Um, but to try and go, get those things together into a modern context, to make this waste, maybe using soil as a medium, valuable. Because, uh, and I think many people working in this area now have proved beyond doubt that it certainly is, is valuable. Um, the urine has a lot of nitrogen, that's valuable. But in some ways, co living compost is, is, is in, in some ways even more valuable because it's not just chemical, I think it's biological. And plants certainly enjoy uh, living compost. And I think that your organization called Soil is well named because your, your aim is to make living compost using soil from human material, which includes human material. So there are many ways of doing that. And it's curious that we hear about the great invention following the flush toilet, but in fact, a pre, a, an earlier invention called the earth closet, which seems to have been almost lost, I guess, 
because the water closet came after it and has been made modern life possible in the cities all over the world maybe the earth closet which was an equally grand invention may have been hidden from view in a way because of the later invention but in fact if you look think about it from a biological point of view the earth closet was also a huge step forward and I think what we're trying to do is to re is the word invent right I don't know to reintroduce the concept of combining human material if you like to call it that with soil to make a new soil mm. which is very valuable and I think that yeah, yeah our studies in Haiti and many places have shown that if you do combine the human material with the natural soil you, you produce a new product it's called compost I'm not sure whether that's the right term but we call it pit soil or pit compost is in fact a new material with slightly different properties which most plants enjoy very much and I know where you're working in Haiti that you're doing this on a, a, a very interesting scale in Durban they're converting this new soil into pellets they're also converting urine into a powder called struvite maybe we could take a little look at these different things yes. that we're talking about what do you say does this so make sense <laughs> does it i think Mind you, the, the camera artist wouldn't say it doesn't make sense <laughs> well no he would he's very honest if he yeah, thought if he thought we were sucking he'd tell us <laughs> so uh okay. one of the things that peter just mentioned and that we just had a chance to see in Durban are these poop pellets, which yes. I'm, not even, I'm not actually sure that they call them poop pellets, but I do. Um, nice. Yeah, so... This, this is a... Uh, what is it baked actually poop. from? It? It's baked. I would say baked poop, yeah. So yeah. in the baking of it, I mean, you make sure that you kill all those harmful mm. pathogens, mm. Um, but you also end up with this rather dry, crum crumbly, yes. pellet-like soil. Um, yeah. which they're beginning to test on plants and is showing some really promising yeah. results. So um, what, what is it then actually? Is this a combination of feces, toilet paper and plastic? Or is it, is it, is it, do they separate? Because you know, if it's from a toilet, a pit toilet anyhow, an awful lot of stuff down there is not biological. Mm -hmm. So. How do they, is this a biological thing only, or do they somehow combine the, what well, do you call it, the, the non the non biological components? I mean, if you look right here, Peter, I'd say I see a little plasticky something in there. I mean, okay. the idea behind this machine is that it sort of sifts out the garbage okay. and then runs the yes. organic matter yes. through the yes. machine. Yes. Yeah. But you're right, there is a lot of garbage in there, so you do get little pieces of yes. plastic and things coming okay. through. Um, but mostly, mostly biological, and the real thing about it is you can just, you can tell it's been really baked. I mean, it's yes, very it's, All the hard. bugs have been burnt out. No bugs in here, that's for sure. That's so good. now that's uh, what the other thing you mentioned was struvite from mm. urine. And uh, this looks highly suspicious here. I, we're actually going to try to travel back to the U.S. with this. Mm. What and will you call it? Well, we'll, we'll call it struvite, but I don't know that they'll believe Washing us. Powder. So we yeah. will show them this film if we're actually mm. trapped in customs. But let's take a look at what this looks like here, mm. this suspicious substance. So this is actually Basically, urine is passed through a reactor, mm. and I believe you add magnesium, and what that does oh, yeah. is it precipitates out mostly the phosphorus. Um, yeah. And actually, most of the nitrogen stays in the effluent, so yes. they're working on a nitrogen reactor right now to get oh, that okay. nitrogen. But mm. I think what we're looking at here is mostly phosphorus. Yes. Um, so what uh, do you think of that, Peter? Well, it looks pretty um, interesting. Um, of course, the phosphorus reserves in the world are not infinite, but then maybe even the water supplies of the world are not infinite. Mm. So, I mean, to capture this valuable product from what might be considered an unlikely source, but a very <laughs> abundant source, it seems to be a damn good idea, if you might say so, because 
you know, where does the urine go? It sort of passes off into, well, a thousand places. But if there's a method of actually capturing a vital phosphorus source from this superabundant uh, supply, I guess that the magic is how do you gather this huge supply into a uh, uh, into a mechanism that where it can be treated. I mean, if you look at Johannesburg and how many m millions of cubic liters of urine are being passed down lose all the time. So that, I mean, that's a pretty big challenge, isn't it? To find yeah. ways and means of directing this magical yellow fluid into the right system. I mean, well, that's, that's the yeah. challenge, I guess, because you've already proved that you can, can convert the stuff. And I guess it contains potassium as well. I believe so. I'm not sure about how much of the potassium you get out with this process, but I, I think you're right. I, I think what this demonstrates is that the technology is there. Yes. And as is so often the case, it's a question of the logistics and the social mm. issues involved with making the technology work. Sure. So the reactor is pretty cool. It's and cool, I yeah. think what they're working on in Durban right now is trying to develop a logistical model for how will we go around and collect all of this urine. And I sure. think that's yet to be seen. Yes, mm -hmm. but I mean, you, I guess it, 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 it's so bulky. I mean, that's, I think, um, was Richard's contention that there's an awful lot of it around. So, I mean, the magic of convert, converting it into the powder has clearly been worked out. Mm -hmm. So that the next magical thing is to fathom out how you direct a lot of it or a good proportion of it into the, into the machine that does the conversion, isn't it? it certainly so if you is. look at a school, for instance, or any institution, but a school, maybe well, we work at a school where there are two and a half, nearly two and a half thousand kids, and they'd be passing an awful lot of urine during the time they're at school, I guess. How do you, well, the bulk of that, how do you take it to such a processor? I mean, that's the big challenge. Well, I think we're going to have to wait a few years to see the what they come thing. up with. Certainly, Durban is in a unique position to answer mm. this question because mm. of the fact that they've built 75,000 urine diversion yes. toilets. So yes. they really have that infrastructure in to sort of look at, is it possible? Mm. And if it can't be done there, I, I would say it would be mm. challenging elsewhere. Mm. But if they can pull it off, well... Mm, very good. 75,000 families. So what, if you work that out, what is that, about 300,000 people or something? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Producing how many litres a day? I produce two litres a day. I've been testing this recently in Benin. So how many... And that was when I was pretty dehydrated, so... Oh, really? Maybe I could do three. So how many litres is that from Durban a day? How many... 600,000. It's about... A, 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 could be a million litres a day. Yeah. Of urine. Especially if you've got some heavy beer drinkers in the mix. Yeah, particularly if you've got heavy beer drinkers. <laughs> now then, so that's the big challenge for the Durban people. Convert that into this powder. Yes. How do you do it? That's the magic of it, isn't it? That's the big challenge. That will be pretty magical. You know, another thing, though, that I find pretty magical, and I think mm. that this was what I was talking about, that, that really brought you and I together. And uh, mm. this right here is another, another product that has both mm. urine and mm. feces in it. Yes. And, uh, I mean, geez, just putting this in my hand compared yes. to the, either the struvite or those baked mm. poop pellets, I mean, mm. it's, this has got a different feel to it. There's really yeah. something magical in here. Yeah, you can smell it's uh, like forest litter. Yeah. But that, of course, is also the natural, that mother nature at work, isn't it? Because they're all biological ingredients. Mm -hmm. And if you go in deep into the deep forest, and you encounter the gnomes and the other leprechauns and other creatures in deep in the forest, I mean, they've been dropping their poo around for the last X hundred thousand years, and it's converting into compost in the in the forest litter. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about our, our waste material is that it is, a, it is biological and if you combine soil with poo you get a, a new type of material. I mean this 
I don't know how many weeks ago or months ago, this would have been unhandleable. Hmm. But it was combined, the stuff which was quite revolting has been combined with soil. I'm not sure whether Richard here combines it. He does with ash, isn't it? Or does he combine it with with actually the he soil puts, only? He puts a little bit of all the it's sort of yard wastes yes. and uh, and I think yes. he reuses his compost in yes. his toilets. Yeah, so. That's right. So mm -hmm. what's happened here is that you've got a most revolting material being converted into a totally acceptable material which is pretty magical. It's entirely natural and the plants love this stuff because it's got oxygen in it. Peter's got a little bit on his nose right now. <laughs> know, That's how nice so, it is. So um, sheer magic and of course nature is magical and, it, and, and nature performs this magic in front of our eyes. So, I mean, it's logical that we should use this magic, you know, to, as, as one means of converting what is pretty revolting into something which is incredibly valuable. I mean, it's a very simple equation, really, isn't it? So, I mean, this happens, and you've proved it in Haiti, and it's been proven in many places around the world that it can happen. Well, and what I, what I like that you just said, Peter, was that, that this is something, this is one way, this is one way to do it. And I think that the really important lesson that I've learned from this trip and just over the years in general is that there are many ways to solve any problem. Sure. And it's unlikely that any one way is going to be the solution mm. everywhere. Mm. So this transformation into compost mm. may be perfect in certain situations mm. like what we're doing in Haiti or mm. like in Malawi mm. where we visited several years ago mm. together mm. and it may be that in the city of Durban poop pellets are going to be the ideal mm. solution mm. and in Johannesburg there may be a different solution still sure. so it's really amazing to learn about all these different mm. techniques some very technological mm. and some very much mm. based on mm. on nature's own processes sure and to know that different places are going to have different solutions. Yeah. I think that's important to just say it again, actually. There may not be one solution for all. And that, the, I mean, I think we have to say it very loud and clear that, you know, the flush toilet it, it was and remains a, a phenomenal step forward. And if you think about it, it doesn't matter whether in Seattle, Washington, or Johannesburg, or Harare, it's transformed the way of life of countless mi billions of people, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to change much, I guess, because... It, but there are the other billions where it's not applicable. And that's where the great challenge comes. And those people live in such a diverse environments that there cannot possibly be one solution. Mm -hmm. It must be that diverse a series of different solutions that can be applied specifically to different places around the world. I mean, that to me is very clear. I think it's very clear to you. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, even with flush toilets, the now are new versions of it, low volume flush mm -hmm. is now, I think, quite commonly used in America, I guess, and I think even in South Africa. And new ways of even it's not a reinvention, but readapting even the flush toilet to suit, you know, a, a new a new world where water is increasingly precious, and yet the method is sound, but one needs to have another economical way of using it. And as Richard has said many times, I think this grey water thing, you know, the volume of water used for domestic use in the cities is colossal. You know, grey water. Um, from washing, bathing, is a, is a huge volume of water to be dealt with, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yes, it is. Yes, it so is. So that, that's an issue which is linked in a way <laughs> to this one. So I think what we're all doing here is to find a diverse number of solutions to a diverse number of situations, hmm. yeah? of which Haiti is one. And Zimbabwe another. And Indeed. South Africa yet another. Yes.